we are here in Copenhagen to, to get the world leaders to agree on a legally binding, and that's the key word, legally binding agreement on reducing the world's greenhouse gas emissions. And what we're looking at here is avoiding greenhouse gas emissions. When these are producing, we don't need to burn fossil fuels. And what this technology does now is delivering huge amounts of reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. Already we are meeting 20% of the EU's Kyoto obligation just with wind energy. In total in the world there's about 2,000 megawatts of offshore installed, almost all of it in Europe. And it's sort of where the onshore industry was 10, 15 years ago. So the industry really needs to grow, develop standards, develop standard procedures, more effective and efficient means of getting these things in. But the extra strong wind resource, the improvements in the technology that have come through that experimentation make us pretty confident that those capital costs will go down. And of course, the competition, their prices are always going up. Because the price of fuel, we don't know what it's going to do this week or next week, but we know over the next five to 10 years, gas, oil, and coal, those prices are all going up. Not a whole lot of countries has oil, but everybody has wind. It's just a matter of harvesting it. And when you look at the fossil prices, they fluctuate. Wind price doesn't. Wind is the same price all of the time, it's free. And that is, that is a wonderful thing. It's an enormous industry and it's grown dramatically, 30 to 40 percent on average per year over the last four years. Just for comparison, globally we installed 27 gigawatts of new wind power capacity last year. That's exactly the same, 27 gigawatts of new capacity of nuclear installed in the last decade. So this says something about the enormous investments that is going into wind energy at a global level these days. There's a growing business uh, interest in a long-term solution to the climate change problem and their presence is being felt. The oil guys and the coal guys, they haven't gone away, but they're balanced now more by the, the clean tech sector and the clean energy side of things. So we have a much more balanced discussion in our meetings of the business and industry groups. Those that would suggest that you have to choose between jobs and the environment are dead wrong. You can have both, and in fact, the only kind of development that makes sense over the long haul is sustainable development, and that's really the thrust of this conference. I think the world is awake to the scope and uh, severity of the issue, and that in and of itself suggests that we're making progress. First thing we have to do is all have a common sense of, of purpose and commitment. I think it's, it's still all to play for, and the stakes are enormous. Uh, the leaders have to come out of here with something. They can't all turn up in Copenhagen and go home empty-handed. just can't happen. Time is now. It is time to do something now about the climatic changes. We definitely do feel that we have something that is part of the solution. Having this climate conference here in Copenhagen makes us at this extremely proud. Being Danes, being a company that comes out of Denmark, to have all the world leaders in Denmark now discussing climate change, discussing the future of this planet here, I mean, it's, it's tremendous.